Are you tired of having to type out bullprop testing cheats in Able True every time you load up The Sims 2 or endlessly switching between move objects on and move objects off by building? In this video, I'm going to show you how to have your desired cheats load up automatically when starting the game and how to create shortcuts for the cheats so you won't have to type out those long lines ever again. We're going to create a text file called userstartup.cheat. But well, before you do that, you need to check if you already have one. So open File Explorer, go to Documents, EA Games, The Sims 2 or The Sims 2 Automatic Collection and Config. You can go and click the View tab and check File Name Extensions. So it will show you the cheat extension that you need to look for. If you have a file here called userstartup.cheat, then you're good to go and you're going to have to open this and edit this later. But first, let me show you how to create one if you don't have one. So we're going to open a simple text editor such as Notepad on Windows. I have it here and we're going to save it in this very location first. So click File, Save and let's find this location. Documents, EA Games, The Sims 2 and Config. I was already here. And you will need to set the type to say all files or if you're not on Windows, then the equivalent of all files on whatever system you're using. And the file name needs to be exactly this, userstartup.cheat. And then you can click save. I'm going to override my existing one here and you have saved it. And now we can begin editing it. So this is the part where you list the cheats that you want to start up automatically when you enter your game. Having your cheat load up automatically means you won't have to type it in the cheat bar when you want to turn it on, it will already be turned on for you. You can only put cheats here that have an on and off or true and false version. The ones that can be toggled. Except for show headlines on off and plumb up toggle because those can't start automatically like this. You have to list these cheats by putting one in each line so you have to divide them by pressing enter. By the way, the order doesn't matter, so you can just go randomly how you want to. So I'm going to start by putting bullprop testing cheats enabled true. And then I hit enter and start to type the next one. And so on. I'm going to do another video on cheats that I think are necessary, so I'm not going to go into too much of the details here, but I want to show you what I have in my file. So that maybe it can give you ideas as to what to put in yours. So I have good old testing cheats enabled true, which does more things than I probably know of. But in my opinion, it's good to have it on all the time because it does no damage if you don't do anything bad with it. <laughs> then I have bullprop use shaders true. That one is necessary for me because for some reason my cats looks super off without it. And it's good for some other graphics effects. A 45 degree angle of rotation is necessary for furnishing and decorating when you want to rotate something in a 45 degree angle, obviously. Don't merge neighborhood floor or falls does it so that I can see neighborhood decoration from lot view, which adds to the realism. In prop max num of visiting sims is super important to me because without this, I would only be able to invite like two sims to my parties. I changed that to 10 so I can invite a realistic amount of sims over to my lots. Quarter tile placement enabled true is so that I can place objects with less restrictions all the time. Note that if you put this in your file, you will still need to activate this in the game by pressing Ctrl and F. This one, I'm not really sure why I have this here. <laughs> I like to sometimes see which pack an object comes from. I guess I just like to know things. And constraint floor elevation falls is so I can elevate the ground even if it has walls or flooring on it. I don't have move objects in here because I prefer to turn it on by myself when needed. I've also seen other people put the pet cheats in here. The one for controlling pets, being able to cancel the actions of pets and taking away free will from pets. But I personally like my pets to function just the way they already do in the game. Now we move into the next important part, which is creating shortcuts or so-called aliases for our cheats. 
Shortcuts are useful so that instead of typing in the whole cheat in the cheat bar, you can just press Ctrl Shift C, type in your shortening, press Enter, and it will take effect just the same. I'm going to begin by giving an alias to move objects on. The way to do this is by following this logic. First, you put the word alias, and then you put whatever you want to use for the cheat in your game. So I'm going to put the letter M. The shorter, the better. And then after that, in quotation marks, you put the original name of the cheat. So you type move objects on. By the way, this is not case sensitive. Pay attention to always close the quotation. Now, after this, you can add descriptions to your cheats if you want to. So this way you can read what the cheat does if you type help or help and the alias of the cheat into the cheat bar in the game. First, you can add a short description and then you can add a long description. Obviously, instead of short description and long description, you type the actual description. This is in case you forget what you set a certain alias for or what the cheat does. But I don't use this function at all because I've been playing this game long enough and if I forget what an alias is for, I just go and check in the user startup cheat file. But still, you can get creative with it. Now with cheats that have an on and an off, or a true and a false version, it makes sense to set aliases for both. So I'm going to set an alias for move objects off. I'm just going to do the same thing, type alias, and then type mo, and then move objects off. You obviously can't have the same alias for two cheats. And these are the rest of my shortcuts. You have to do the same thing here, divide them by pressing enter. So let's see what we have here. Besides the well-known move objects on and off, I have max motives, which maximizes the motives of all sims on lot. I have motive decay off and on, so that I can stop my sims motives from going down if needed. I have S and SO for snap objects to grid. Uh, this way I can place objects off grid if needed. I usually only use this for wall decoration. I have P for toggling the plumb bob. Yes, this one doesn't work as an automatic startup, but that doesn't mean that you couldn't create an alias for it to toggle with. I usually toggle my plumb bob for screenshots. And I just have to use this one letter for it. With the same logic, I have show headlines off and show headlines on with sh and sho. And the last thing I have here is good old testing cheats enabled again. I have this startup automatically, but I also created aliases for it. So if I ever felt like I needed to turn it off, I could, I could do it easily. And now here's one more cheat that I'm going to put here. This is kind of a specific one and I didn't even have it in my file until now, but I just kind of realized that I, that I want my box to live forever in their jars. I'm going to put box jar time decay off. And it's important that you have this one cheat at the bottom of your file because otherwise it won't load and it will break the rest of your file. This is the only cheat that has this problem. So if you don't want this cheat to load up automatically, then you have nothing to worry about. And if you do, you can put it at the bottom like I did and it will be fine. So these are the contents of my user startup cheat file. Don't forget to save it before you load up your game. Otherwise you obviously won't see it take effect. Also pay attention to the details, especially quotation marks in your file. Don't forget to double check that each of the cheats and possible descriptions have quotation marks on both ends. If you forget to put one quotation mark at the end of one of your cheats, it will basically disable all the rest of your file. Similarly, make sure you don't misspell any of the cheats or use cheats that don't exist. For the longest time, half of my file wouldn't load because I used an incorrect version of this cheat that for some reason worked in the game, but wouldn't load up from the startup file, which is curious. But anyway, this file and its contents cannot break your game. So don't worry about that. All that can go wrong with these is that they simply don't function. So if you have a problem with, for example, this cheat, then these won't start up automatically and these aliases will not work. So you will have to keep using the long versions in the game until you solve the problem. And don't forget to always save. So that's about it. That's all you need to know.
Now you can load up your game and try out your own improved cheat system. Remember if something doesn't work, revisit your file and double check the spelling, the quotation marks and the enters between the lines. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments below. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Sims 2 videos from me in the future, then hit subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, enjoy your game and see you another time.